My goal with this video right here is to give you the internet's most complete guide on expectations of you about to enter paramedic school. Whether you're thinking about going to paramedic school or you're getting ready for it, I hope this video serves you well. Here we go. Hey everyone, it's the Paramedic Coach here. Make sure to watch this entire video to get all the tips inside this video right here. Make sure to hit like, smash that like button down below, and hit subscribe as well down below to make sure you get all the content I put out here for your EMS education. Now, inside this video, my goal with this, I'm gonna go through everything. Schedules, what to expect, different degrees. We're gonna talk about different programs, what is required of you in school and then at the end of school at National Registry. This is gonna be a complete guide for you on what you should expect a day in the life of a paramedic student. So the first thing you're probably thinking about is, what is actually required of me to get in to paramedic college, to get into paramedic school? Well, first you gotta become an EMT. You could be an advanced EMT or an EMT, but you need to at least have a national registry or a state certified certificate, meaning that you have gotten through EMT school and became certified by either NREMT or the state that you live in, okay? That's step one. Now, when we apply to paramedic school, no matter where it is, there's going to be some sort of entry exam. Now, for the most part, it's usually just a written exam. There may be in some areas some hands-on stuff, but you should expect at least a written exam and quite possibly an interview as well, okay? But the bare minimum, I would say, would be a written exam. You could expect an interview, some hands-on stuff, um, multiple interviews, depending on where you're going to school. But let's talk first about the entry exam. What is it about? I don't want you to freak out about it. It's essentially testing your EMT level skills. Kind of like a mini FISDAP or a mini NREMT. Every paramedic has had it taken an entry exam. You gotta take it too. Now the goal in the test, it's usually 100 or so questions, is to get at least 80% to get into school. That's usually the bar at set. Again, it's not a rule, but what I found, this is usually the general concept, you'll find in a paramedic school. So now we've entered paramedic school. Now, you might be wondering where exactly can I find this paramedic school? Community colleges, could be hospitals, could be fire departments, could be an EMS academy. Those are some of the main places you're gonna find this schooling, okay? Now we're in school. What's the day in the life of a paramedic student? Well, here's what you're gonna have. You're gonna have classes with anatomy and physiology. That's gonna be there, okay? That's number one. Number two, you're gonna have your traditional paramedic school where you're actually going through stuff like medical emergencies, traumatic emergencies, advanced life support, stuff like that. Getting your ACLS, your PAL certification, and there are other certifications you may get, but those are the two main ones. Uh, every single state is gonna do your ACLS and your PALs are the most common certifications you're gonna get and gain as a paramedic throughout school. You're gonna have lab days where you're actually going in with an instructor, usually for a few hours and learning different skills. For example, your IV skill, your IO skill, your intubation skill, right? Your superglottic airway skill, right? Stuff like that that are the ALS level skills. Giving meds, we have the Intramuscular, we have the intranasal, right? We talked about the IO, the IV, stuff like that. I'll give you another one. At one point, you may even see a cadaver in some paramedic schools. At the very least, a mannequin. You may bring in a pig trachea to actually do a surgical crike on that patient, which is the most advanced airway that you can do as a paramedic, right? That would be above intubation, essentially. It'd be a very critical patient where you couldn't intubate, so you have to do a crike. You're gonna to learn to do that. 
What about near decompression? These are all of the advanced level skills you'll learn during your lab. And they'll also go over stuff like your patient assessment, role play scenarios, medical math you should expect as well. It's one of the biggest things that during paramedic school. What makes the paramedic the paramedic is the cardiology and the pharmacology mixed in with the ALS skills and assessment. That is what makes a paramedic a paramedic. And you're on the medical, you know, like the doctor, PA model of medicine as a paramedic. Does that make sense? Okay, great. Now, here's something a lot of people don't talk about. I want to tell you a story back when I went to paramedic school. We were sitting in a large auditorium. This will happen. You'll see. Watch when you go to school. We had about 32 students inside this large auditorium. The instructor comes up, gives a powerful speech about, you know, paramedicine, paramedic college, all that kind of stuff. Day one of class, we're down at 30 people. Two people decide, you know what, this is not for me. They left the program. At the end of first semester, we are down to 14 students. Now, my whole goal with everything I do in this channel is to best prepare you for school, and that's why I created my video course. The link's in the description, you can check it out to prepare for school. Now, what should you expect to go over as far as coursework in paramedic school? You wanna prepare for it, for example. You're already gone through your BLS, that's your basic life support. Paramedicine is ALS, right? So the biggest thing you're gonna learn about is a lot of cardiology, like EKGs, 12 lead EKGs, right? Pharmacodynamics, pharmacology, a laundry list of EMS medications. When do we use them? What's the mechanism of action when we use them? When do we definitely don't use them? What's the dose of that medication? Drug cards is what I'm getting at, right? It's a big part of uh, paramedic school. Now, one that we haven't talked about yet, talk about classroom stuff. Let's talk about your clinicals, your ride time, what you should expect for that. So it's not a rule. Every program is different. Some programs will actually put you on the ambulance near the beginning and throughout your whole schooling. I personally like this. I don't like that because you don't know everything and you're kind of put out there. I don't like that. I, if I was leading a paramedic school, if I was, if I was the director of a program and I was creating my, my very own program, I like a program that actually takes you through and at the end, you do your ride time. You're doing your clinicals in the hospitals throughout school. Now that's how my paramedic school is structured. I like that. Then you're doing your ride time. You've gone through all the, the learning education. You've gotten your ACLS, you've gotten your PALS, you've gone through. Your written part is done. The only thing stopping you from passing paramedic school is passing your ride time out in the field. I like that. I like that better. Um, and then do your clinicals in the hospital throughout. So when you first start, what's to say in the beginning? You're gonna be paired up in a local hospital to do clinicals. So what it's gonna look like is you're gonna be with either a nurse or a paramedic or a medical provider inside the hospital and you'll be going around with them doing different skills, assessing patients. And there are long shifts. Clinical shifts could be minimum four hours, could be eight hours, could be even longer. It's a full shift work. You'll be doing that could be multiple times a week, could be once a week, depending on how your program's set up. But it's like having it at the very minimum, at least a part-time job doing just, just doing your clinicals. Big thing you'll be doing, you'll be going all over the hospital in different sections. I'll name a few, the OR, the NICU, cardiac floors, med surgical floors, the ER. You may even go to different pediatric um, clinics. Pretty cool stuff. You're gonna see a little bit of everything, including the emergency department, of course, That'll be your main clinical will be in the emergency department. And you'll be there as part of the team when people come into triage and when people actually come in to the really critical bays inside that local emergency department. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is you're going to have to innovate a certain number of patients depending on the state and protocol you're in. But you will be expected to go to the OR and get innovations done. You have to have these done to actually get through and get state certified or again, or nationally registry certified, right? She'll go in the OR, someone's having a surgery, they're gonna go in there and innovate that patient. Crazy stuff. I went through it. It was literally life-changing to see all that.
You know, it, it really was. The ventilator, everything. Really powerful. Now we've talked about clinicals. Now I want to talk about ride time and give you some ride time secrets. Now, during ride time, it depends on your program, but let's just say you had a 10 week, a 12 week ride time. We are going out and you're getting your hours. Actually, as a preceptee, under a preceptor in the ambulance, there's a veteran paramedic, they, they're going to pair you up, you're the paramedic student, and you work as a team, and you're out there actually taking care of patients as a paramedic trainee, if you will, right? But you're in charge of patient care. So what should you expect by your ride time? When you're in your final ride time, I should be able to give you the entire box of all the medications, narcotics, everything, and you should be able to tell me when to get a drug, when not to give it, adverse effects, adult and pediatric doses, how we give it, all of that. You need to know cold by the time you're in ride time. One of the first things your pre is going to do is pull out the med box and go, let's go through the meds. If you don't know a med, you can't use it. That's what you're going to hear a lot of, right? And now, I recommend you go really get there early and start going through the truck to really understand the equipment that you're dealing with when you're actually starting your ride time. That's very, very important. And you wanna make a good impression. Obviously, you wanna be professionally dressed. You wanna be ready to go. You wanna help out around the base, obviously, as well. And then finally, the last you know, piece of the puzzle here, if you will, is you wanna get there early to check the truck. I can't say how important it is. You wanna know where everything is. You wanna organize the way you want it to be organized. Very important as well. So what is your preceptor actually looking for when you're doing your paramedic student ride time? What they're looking for is that you can become a team leader and delegate tasks and lead the scene while actually producing high quality you know, ALS care to the patient. So for example, right, they're not looking for you to be a jack of all trades and do every single skill. You need to learn to delegate. So let me give you a perfect example. Let's say you're the paramedic, right, student, and you're in charge of the scene. You have an advanced DMT on your, on your team here. Your goal is to manage the patient care and get the patient what they need, not do every single skill under the book, right? So for example, you might want to delegate the EKG to your partner while you give the IV and the medication or vice versa, right? Both can work, right? Obviously, you want to get your ALS skills in. So maybe you would delegate the EKG, which is just putting stickers on a patient, right? And then you can do the IV and the medications and then go from there, right? And then, okay, let me see the EKG. And you're delegating with your team, but you're doing strong patient care. And let me give you a pearl about delegation. You do not want to be a student who barks orders. Nobody likes that. Hey, I went through, I had to learn the hard way. And here's the tip I got about this. Very important, I'm gonna give it to you here, is this. If you are in a situation where the patient is an ALS patient, but they're awake and talking to you, it's not at a critical traumatic accident scene. I'm talking about patient who's ALS, maybe chest pain, difficulty breathing, but they're somewhat stable, but they're ALS, okay? We don't wanna bark orders, but we wanna delegate. So what we do, and I'm gonna give you the example, like I was speaking to the patient right here, and you're behind the camera, and you're my EMT partner. I'm the medic. Ready? Three, two, one, and scene. Here we go. All right, Mr. Jones, what we're gonna do next is my partner's gonna come around and give you some oxygen, just a little oxygen in the nose, and it's gonna connect that to our heart monitor here. That way we can see what's going on inside of your lungs and also give you a little bit of extra oxygen, okay? Now, after that, my partner is gonna come around, put a few stickers on your chest to do an EKG. Now, when my partner's doing the oxygen, connecting you with the heart monitor, the EKG, all that stuff, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an IV in one of your arms and give you a medication. So that would be an example, right? And you would tell them what the medication is and why they're giving it, but see how I was able to delegate my partner my partner can hear me speaking through the patient I'm delegating. You want to do that on your stable ALS calls. Now, obviously, if you're on an emergent call, meaning that there's a critical life-threatening situation going on, at that point, 
you need to be able to command and say, look, do this, do this, do this. That, that just, like the military, like EMS, like fire department, like police, you don't have time to delegate like that. But under a normal ALS call, they want to see that delegation. So important. The second piece is they want to see that you're thinking critically about cases. I'm going to give you an example. This is why I talk about using the various mnemonics that I have, right? I'm going to give you one here. So you have somebody with altered mental status. There's four S's in altered mental status, right? And I'm going to take the mnemonic here in a second, and we'll put it on the side here, okay? But it gives you an opportunity to differential diagnose so you don't get burned. You can then tell your preceptor what you're thinking about based upon the mnemonic and what you've checked for. That makes sense? So let's say you have someone who's altered mental, right? And maybe everyone on scene thinks it's uh, sepsis, right? You don't get tunnel vision and agree with them. You assess the whole patient. So how many? There's four S's in altered mental status. And here they are. I'll put them on the screen here. Check a blood sugar. Do a stroke scale. Any seizure history? Any signs of seizure? Are they postictal? Then is your sepsis, right? Signs of infection, right? Warm skin, all that stuff, right? Now, if it's not, I'll put down below here, N-O-T, if it's not one of those four, N stands for Narcan. Are we at a sneaky overdose of any kind, right? The Narcan reminds you of an overdose. So check, are we at a sneaky overdose here? O would be for auction. Hey, did you ever get an O2 set? Are they hypoxic? What's the end title come back at? Think about respiratory stuff, sneaky. And the final one is T for trauma. Are we at a sneaky trauma? Take the hat off the patient. Any signs of trauma here, okay? Any sneaky head trauma here? Did they get hit? Did we miss something? That's gonna be your altered mental status workup right there. And of course, you're gonna do vitals and do an EKG and then assess your patient head to toe. There's all the information you need for your altered mental. Make sense? There it is. Now, final piece I get about paramedic school. Paramedic coach, should I do a degree program? Should I do a certificate program? Should I do an accelerated program? Should I do 12 months? Should I do four years bachelor degree, paramedic? What should I do? I wanna tell you what's going on inside paramedic education right now and what I recommend. And this is not based upon someone telling me this. This is based upon what I did and it served me well. So I believe it would serve you well too. What I did was I wanted to get the ball rolling. I wanted, to, I wanted to start my career. I wanted to get out there. I wanted to start being a paramedic and get my experience going, you know? So I decided to go the certificate route and I did one of those, you know, 14 to 18 month paramedic schools, right? Mine was a 14 month program. I went through and essentially it was broken up into giant semesters. So like a block first semester block second semester, big ride time with then more stuff on top of that. Clinical is the route. Hyper-focused time. I got through it and I had my paramedic national registry. Now I could practice out in the field, get my state license and start actually working up patients and becoming a paramedic, right? Good stuff, right? Now, while I was working my first few years as a paramedic, I went back to school online I had to take one chemistry class, but I went back to school online. I was in person. But I had to go back to school online for the rest of that. I could knock out all these steps and I actually was able to finish my associate degree. Just another notch on the belt, right? Never hurts to have that notch in the belt, especially when a lot of paramedic schools now are going towards an associate degree. Now, this is back. Give me some, give me some clarity here. I had one of the top instructors in my area when we're doing CME. This is back in like 2014, 15, telling people, hey, you should really go back to school and get your associate degree. This is where the profession's going. So just get it out of the way now. You're already halfway there. Knock it out. So I took action and I knocked it out and it's over and I have it and it's good, right? And I felt like that was the best option for me at the time. You have your own life to do. You have your own situation to do. Do I think that you need to go and you know go through a four-year bachelor's degree program to become a paramedic in the United States? It's just not the way it is, okay? If you wanna get that, hey, fair play to you. I want to make sure that I can become a paramedic, start working, I want to do well, I want to have the extra associate degree, 
but I also didn't want to get into debt going through a, a traditional four-year college. So my advice to you is get the ball rolling, right? If you can't get the ball rolling, it doesn't hurt to work up the ladder, right? Instead of doing it all at once, and but you haven't even started working yet, right? So that's my recommendation to you is go piece by piece. It served me. Hey, tell me in the comments down below what your game plan is on starting paramedic school. And my friends, hope you enjoyed this video. I got one more message for you. Now, if you're one of these three people, if you are getting ready for EMT, advanced EMT, or paramedic school, maybe you're in school right now and you're struggling, you just want to become great, you want some extra help to understand the why behind what you're doing, get better grades in class, or you are studying right now for national registry exams at any level, EMT, advanced EMT, paramedic, click the link down below and get my video study course. You get access to over 180 plus videos of content, plus our community group of students, and we are in the thousands strong and growing every day inside a paramedic coach community group, and inside all that will help you throughout your entire career from pre-EMT all the way to paramedic. If you go right now, I'll give you a lifetime access to the program. My friends, I hope this video served you well. I hope it was the most complete guide on the face of the internet as far as expectations for paramedic school, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Don't waste any time. Don't, don't be hesitant and just do it because I know this program works. And I know it's, it got me to where I was, where it's been a year without school, from EMT to, hey, I passed my test in 70 questions. Like, go for it. You could do it. Like, do not hesitate and don't waste any time. People that don't know you, they need to, they need this program. This program is not a, a choice. To me, this program is a have to. People who are getting ready for paramedic school, or if you're getting ready to go in the Navy as a corpsman or as an Army medic, um, you gotta prepare yourself. Evan, I know you've got a program that helps people prepare that way. So bottom line is guys, you don't ever wanna hear something for the first time with a bunch of other students. So if you're in a competitive learning environment, you don't wanna hear about AFib for the first time where everybody else, you wanna have an understanding of it before you walk in the room. And then 9.30 um, on that Thursday, and that's when I found that I had passed my national registry paramedic. I felt like you taught it on a level that normal people can learn it versus instructors from a college. Trust them. Uh, I would say that they need to put all of their trust in you. Went on there and then I continued reviewing and I did it for about a month and you know, it, it helped a lot. Like I said, even after school and I took that test one time and I passed it.